In this video, we'll be setting up two Behringer S16s with a Behringer X32. We'll go over the physical connections first before moving on to the settings on each S16 and the X32. There are a few different ways to configure these three devices, but this setup is the most common. First, we connect the AES-50 port A on S16A to the AES-50 port A on the X32. We do this using a CAT5 cable. Next, we'll connect AES-50 port B on the first X16 to AES-50 port A on the second S16. Now that we have both S16s connected in an Ethernet chain to our X32, we can start configuring each device. It's important to note that each of these devices could be our clock master. However, we will be using the X32 as clock master and the S16s will slave to that clock. On S16A, we hold down the config button and rotate the select knob until the display says 1 through 8 and all the other LEDs are off. On S16B, the setup is almost exactly the same. We hold down the config button and rotate the select knob all the way to the left until out plus 8 is illuminated. Note the display for S16A will show green LEDs for link A and link B, whereas S16B will display green LEDs for link A only. Now that we have our S16 set up, we can configure our X32 to talk to our S16s. First, press the routing button to the right of the display and go to the Home tab using the Page Select buttons. Here we'll assign the input channels on each of the S16s to the faders on the X32. We do that by looking through the list of possible inputs and selecting the AES-50A channels on our S16 that we want to assign to our X32 faders. We only select AES-50A because we're only using the AES-50A port on the X32. For example, we want channels 1 through 8 on S16A to correspond with faders 1 through 8 on our X32. So under the inputs 1 through 8 column, we scroll down to AES-50A 1 through 8 using encoder number 1 and then we press down on the encoder to make the selection. We'll repeat that process of using the corresponding encoder to assign each bank until all 32 inputs on the S16 correspond to our X32. Now that we have all our inputs routed, we'll set up the outputs on the X32 to send back to each S16. First, we'll go to the AES-50A tab on the routing page of the X32 using the Page Select buttons. Then we'll select out 1 through 8 from the first column on the left and press encoder number 1. That'll send outputs 1 through 8 of the X32 back to the S16A using the same CAT5 cable we used for inputs. We do not need a separate CAT5 cable for outputs. Next, we'll select out 9 through 16 from the second column and press encoder number 2. Because each S16 only has 8 output channels, Channels 9 through 16 will automatically be sent to S16B. You should be aware that by default, the main outs are on channels 15 and 16. So when you choose out 9 through 16 in the AES-50 tab, the signal for your mains will now be sent to channels 7 and 8 on S16B. This is often more convenient than running them from the mix position since mains are usually closer to the stage box than the X32 at the front of house position. We now have 32 input channels from our S16s routed into our X32 and 16 channels of the X32 outputs routed back to the S16s. We can now save this routing preset by pressing the utility button, followed by encoder number 3 where we can name our preset, and then the far right encoder to save it.